Hi everyone, my name is Dalia Gartzman. I'm an algorithms researcher in VIA, where we develop an on-demand uh, ride-sharing service. But our super cool product is not why I'm here today. I am here today because at the research group, we have a research repository that holds, uh, well, our research, but also lots of uh, scripts and models that each of uh, myself and my colleagues, we write for our own needs, but then anyone else can use. And the thing is that I wanted a way for me to explore this repository and find out uh, of hidden gems and stuff. And one way I thought of was that I could browse the entire repository, look inside every file, read the doc string, see what's going on, and maybe understand what's going on in this function. But I wasn't going to do that. Another idea that I had was to uh, browse my colleagues' brains, compute, uh, connect them to the computer and browse their brains. And uh, well, we're not there yet, technologically speaking. But I still wanted a way uh, to browse the repository and find out uh, cool things that my colleagues wrote and that I myself can use as well in my research. So I went to the internet and the internet said, Dahlia, there is this package in Python called Sphinx, and this package is like magic. You download the package, you run it or something, and then automatically you have a read the doc style uh, documentation of whatever you want to document. And I thought, okay, this looks really promising. Like I could use this package also for the collaborative project that I was working on, um, what I told you about the research repository. Uh, so I could use it to document this repository and uh, like me and my colleagues could browse this, browse this repository to see um, what yeah, everyone else was writing. And also I thought, if one day I want to make something like a package of myself for myself uh, and I want to share it with other people, then I could also use this uh, Sphinx tool to document this, uh, this project that I had and to make it publishable and easy to access. And by the way, if you're going to attend uh, Shai Palachi's talk tomorrow, uh, he's going to convince you to publish your work. So this is kind of a, a preceding sequel. So if you're going your work, my advice, my request is do it with a proper documentation. So uh, the internet said that Sphinx was going to be like easy and magic, but then I started using it and I thought, and I, it was really complicated and I couldn't really understand how to make it work. And it seems like one of those many cases where um, you must have stumbled upon these yourselves, that it's like I looked at the documentation that there is online and I saw the, peop the questions that people ask on Stack Overflow. And I thought, if I would have like this initial sense of what's going on here, then I could understand everything else. But just this process of zero to one was like so damn frustrating. I mean, who would have thought a documentation package would have such terrible documentation. So, <laughs> uh, luckily I, um, I stood up for the challenge and me and Sphinx are good friends now. And my goal today is to sell with you this onboarding stage, like to go this phase from zero to one, because I know that once you're there, you're gonna understand all the rest. So if you're ready, let's start. Uh, what are we going to accomplish today? On the first part, I'm going to do like an overview about what is this Sphinx anyway and how it can be useful for you. Then I'm going to talk for a moment about a really important file called conf.py. And then I'm going to get to the main part of this talk, which is the tutorial of how you can use what I have to give you today in order to document your next project. So what is the setting that I'm talking about? Uh, so, if you know, there's a website, a really cool website called Euler's Project. It has lots of mathematical riddles. And the idea is that uh, once you solve the mathematical riddle, that's like phase one, and then you solve it do, uh, using code. And so I took one of those riddles, uh, riddle number 185, and I solved it using code. And let's say now I want to show the, my solution to my friend, and I want to show them, uh, so there are some... Um, some parts of this repository where I solve this, uh, this riddle that are maybe less important, like the playground Python notebook I used. And I want to share the main parts of the solution, which are three 
components and one runner function. And let's say I want to give my friend the solution. So one way for me to do that would be to show them the repository I opened on GitHub and tell them, OK, the solution is there. You can browse the files. You can look inside the functions. You can read the doc strings. It's all, I mean, I wrote doc strings for everything. But this is like so 90s. And this is really not the way the world is. And I thought there must be a better way. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make this into this. So this is a, an actual website that is hosted, hosted on GitHub pages, and I'm going to talk about that more uh, going on. And the way my friend could now browse the documentation of my repository is by going to a website that is beautifully designed, and it, most of it is created automatically. And you have functions that are very well presented, and uh, like complex models that are presented in a nice structured designed way. Anyway, so some uh, highlights that I, uh, that I like about Sphinx before we dive into the details. Uh, so first, if you can notice, there are some mathematical symbols here. Uh, there's, a math there's a scripting language called LaTeX, which allows me to render these mathematical symbols. So I can also use that in Sphinx. And everything that let me, lets me use LaTeX is immediately my friend. And it also lets me take uh, like specific uh, instructions inside my doc string and render them into clear, uh, like, OK, terminal options, for example. And it also, if I want, it allows me to present the source code as part of my documentation. It allows me to take uh, complex models and pre present them in a structured way. And finally, uh, it allows me to take all of the output of what I took now, of what I built now, and put it in a website. Because that's what people do, right? Imagine you have a package that you just wrote and you spent some time on, and you want other people to use it as well. So you write a documentation and you host it on a website. So I'm going to show you also how to do that using GitHub pages. Um, so in order for all of this to happen, there are two main files that we should be uh, aware of. One is index.rst. RST stands for restructured text. It's a markdown language, which basically means that it's text with some fun, some fun features. And uh, so index.rst is the source code for the home page of my documentation. So index.rst is what I write. And then Sphinx takes this uh, file in this markdown language and renders it into index.html, which will be the home page of my website. And basically, every page in my documentation is a .rst file that I write. And it's going to be rather simple, and I'm going to show you that. And then Sphinx takes this .rst file and turns it into a .html page in my documentation. The next file is conf.py which holds uh, like basic configurations that control the entire project. And so the second part, I'm going to, uh, OK, so this is, <laughs> this is conf.py. And this is after I edited a lot of stuff out and reorganized it. And I hope I put it in a way that will be easier to use. And I'm going to show you later how you can use it as well. And at first, when I prepared for this talk, I thought, wow, there are so many non-trivial stuff here. And it's going to be really hard to understand. It took me a really long time to understand what's going on here. I should share it with the audience. And I thought I would go over all of this file with you. But it was really, really, really exhausting. And even when I put this panda in the middle to cheer me up, uh, it was too much for me. So obviously, it was going to be too much for you. So I decided to take all the slides that I prepared, put them aside under extra slides, and you can access them anytime. And what I want to talk to you uh, in this uh, frontal interaction is just one detail that we can take with us going forward. And this is the Sphinx extension called Autodoc. And for me, this is like the essence of Sphinx. It's an extension that I find inside the conf.py uh, file. And it allows me to take this one line, auto class, and then give a path to a class that I want to document. And then, OK, you don't see a lot because it's small, but it 
with one line, Sphinx turns it into a documentation of the, uh, the doc strings from the entire model and presents it like structured and it's the same structure throughout the product, project, so it's very easy to follow the structure. Um, so Autodoc has a lot of other features, except uh, besides auto class. What was it? Auto class. Uh, I put a link here, and um, so okay, that's it for now. Maybe just remember this functionality in mind. I have a .rst file that I write, and I put inside one line that says um, auto class and the path to my class. And then Sphinx turns it into a web page, a .html page that, uh, that holds the documentation with the entire doc strings. Okay, uh, so we're now at the main part of how you can use uh, what I'm gonna show you today and build documentation for your next project. And before I dive in, I wanna tell you that this part is going to be rather technical. I, uh, it's not my plan to like dictate action items that you're supposed to remember by heart and then go home and like apply from your head or something. My goal in the next few minutes is to show you like the way of the land and show you maybe just so you get a basic idea on how things work and how you can start, how you do the onboarding stage of using this package. And everything that I'm gonna talk about in the next few minutes is available in the repository that I showed you. And it's, uh, we're just gonna go line by line and see how it goes. Let's hope it goes well. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start. First part, pip install Sphinx. Did not see this one coming, right? So once we've installed, installed Sphinx, we can really start working. So as I said, I prepared uh, a repository uh, that, will that I will follow in this talk. Uh, my username on GitHub is Dalia G, the name of the repository is Sphinx185, and you can go there uh, right now or whenever you want, and you can see there uh, the solution and the documentation and the source code for everything and the slides for the stock and all the <laughs> extra slides and uh, everything that I edited out. So what you're, gonna, what you're going to see there are two folders that I wanna talk about now. One is just called documentation. This folder contains uh, the documentation of the project I talked about, the solution of the uh, riddle from Euler's, Euler's project uh, website. Um, but the thing is that this folder contains a lot of information that I, okay, so the way it happened was that I wanted to learn how to use this package myself. And so I built this repository as a way for me to teach myself how to use this package. And many things that I put inside this documentation folder are stuff that I wanted to remember for myself. Like, oh, I learned how to do this new feature. Okay, so I put it there. So next time I want to use it, I can just go to the documentation folder and copy paste whatever I want. And I'm going to show you next how to do all these stuff. But the thing is that this documentation folder holds, holds a lot information that you might not want to use in your project when you want to document if you create a documentation for your project so for that I created another folder called documentation template for your next project and this folder is like a very lean uh, place to start from so I'm gonna assume that you went on the website on the on my github repository and downloaded this folder documentation template for your next project uh, you put it inside your local repository, your local project, and renamed it documentation, just so we don't have to say all the sentence all over again. Uh, so bravo, you already have now in your, uh, in your local project a documentation of some uh, dummy, lean, uh, made up something that I made. Um, so you're gonna already have this on your computer now. And you can access it by going to, so we said there's a documentation uh, folder. Inside there's a s underscore build slash HTML slash index HTML. We said that's the homepage of uh, the website of the documentation. You can open it in your browser and already you're gonna see uh, this uh, homepage, yeah. So how are you going to use this to 
uh, personalize it for your project. So the first part uh, to personalize is the conf.py file I, um, I showed you. And so in order to make things a bit simpler, in the conf.py uh, copy that's inside the folder I was talking about, I put a pattern that I was hoping would say change me, but then someone pointed out to me, it said schnagame, <laughs> and it was too late for me to change it. So we're all gonna have to deal with it. And we're gonna imagine that it says change me. Um, so this pattern of change me, you can uh, search it inside the file and follow the instructions. So for example, uh, you have here um, uh, change me, uh, change this to fit your project. So just name your project, whatever you want to call it, change your name, change the year, whatever. So this is like, uh, so this uh, pattern uh, appears uh, in maybe three or four places throughout the, the conf.py file, because I really wanted to make things lean, like the just the basic necessities so that you would have a smooth and fast transition between having no documentation and having objectively beautiful documentation. So index.rst is uh, the file that I write and then it turns into the homepage of my repository of my documentation. And again, I uh, made a really uh, lean version and you have some inline instructions that you can change. And the homepage of your documentation is something that you're gonna uh, work on as you go along with your documentation and you're gonna change it quite often or just in one time if you're really successful. Um, so my advice just start with, by like uh, changing the headline or something just to get you uh, started. Uh, then if you want to add another page to your documentation. So let's assume I have a class called dummy class template for your next project and it's sitting under a file called dummy class template for your next project. Project.py. And I want to add it to my documentation. So we said I need to generate a .rst file that will then turn into a page in my documentation. So just a small tip, uh, it's really easy to follow the backend of your documentation if you call the files by the, by the same name as the Python files that you want to document. So I'm going to call it dummy class template for your next project.rst. And again, a very lean uh, template for you to work with. So I have the header and then the pipes are for vertical space. And then we said I have auto class with a full path to my class that I want to document. So two tips here. One, um, have the entire path. And two, took me a while to figure this one out. You must have an init.py file inside the folder that holds your code. Maybe it's obvious for everyone. For me, it wasn't obvious anyway. Uh, and I put inside a nice link that lets you return home. Oh, okay. So now I made the page that is supposed to become uh, the web, uh, the page of my documentation, but I also need to signal Sphinx that I made this page. So I'm gonna go back to the index.rst, which is the, the, like the homepage. And there is a, a TOC tree, like a table of content. And under that, I just put the name of the .rt file and Sphinx will know by itself to uh, render it into an HTML page in my documentation. Uh, okay, net. okay, so I put all these changes and now I need to apply them in, um, yeah, just to apply them. And so what I do is I go into the terminal inside the folder that, uh, that holds the documentation and I run make clean HTML. So I could also just write make HTML and then Sphinx would take all the RST files and turn, the, turn them into my documentation. But um, in order for it, so Sphinx keeps kind of a cache of what it previously built. So in order for all of my new changes to apply, my advice to you, always write make clean HTML, which deletes all the previous build and then builds everything from scratch. If you're lucky, you got a very clean and uh, okay output like this one. In case you see some errors or um, uh, errors, whatever, warnings. Uh, sometimes they're rather indicative, sometimes not. So good luck with that. I'm not gonna go through all the errors in the book. And that's it. You have a documentation now.
and you can view it locally. We said you have inside documentation, you have this underscore build HTML index.html that you can open in your website and all the hyperlinks are already working so I can press this uh, uh, class um, link and I can also access the source code and I have a beautiful documentation. But until now, it only exists on my device. And it's, uh, we didn't come here today to document stuff for ourselves because we already know what's going on in our project. Our goal is to share our project with other people and help them use it. So last stretch, let's post our documentation website. Uh, let's post our documentation as a website using GitHub pages. So just a few uh, rather simple steps. Create a folder called docs under the, the root of your project. Copy inside all the content of this uh, documentation, underscore build, HTML, whatever. Then create an empty file called no jackal. This is a sign for GitHub pages to tell, to tell the website, like to tell GitHub pages, hey, listen, I know you have a themes with jackal. I don't know what it means, but I don't want it. It's something that I don't know what it is, but it's not useful for me because I already made a design for my website, for my documentation website. So I want to tell GitHub pages, no jackal, please. Use my HTML and CSS that I have in my project and you're going to have in your project when you download the folder from the repository. Um, and push your changes to master branch. And in your repository on GitHub, go to settings, GitHub's pages, uh, GitHub pages source, choose master branch slash docs folder, save, and really now that's it. And you have a website hosted on GitHub pages uh, of the documentation of your project, and you can go to your beautiful documentation and share it with everyone. Wasn't so hard, right? <laughs> so um, I hope I showed you, uh, I hope I convinced you uh, that if you have uh, something that you want to share, first, do stuff, share with the world. That's like a given. Now that you want to share stuff with the world, I hope I convinced you that using the background material that I showed you that is available on my GitHub, uh, you can do it quite easily and benefit the entire world. And uh, so I'm going to do a part four surprise live demo. I'm not sure there's internet. Is there in Yes. So it's not really a live demo. I'm just going to browse with you the website I'm talking about. So uh, my uh, username, Dalia G, Sphinx185 is the name of the repository. And you can browse everything that's inside, including the um, help your colleagues help, th help themselves. This is the talk slides and the extra slides. And if you go uh, scroll down to the readme, you can go to to the documentation of this repository. So I want to show you some stuff that we can, uh, uh, some cool stuff uh, that uh, Sphinx lets you do. So first I can have pink. Yeah, that's, that was really important for me and took me a couple of minutes. Uh, so I can have uh, like nice uh, design stuff and I have a logo of my project and I have a sidebar with table of content and quick search and as I showed you, I and go to the ILP manager. Oh, lots of lots. Uh. Um, and the class API of the class I showed you and and also uh, how to use this for your next project. It's uh, like the dry instructions of what we went through together right now. And uh, at the bottom of every page, you can return home. And uh, OK, so at the bottom of every page of this documentation, you can scroll down and see the source code that created this HTML page. So in the HTML page is the RST code that generated this HTML page, Pff, inception. Uh, and my purpose in doing this was that, let's say you look at this page and you say, ooh, a box with a tiny disclaimer seems like something that could be useful for my project. Okay, no worries, scroll down, uh, tiny disclaimer, ah, that's easy, I just do a dot dot topic. Nekudo time, nekudo time, tiny disclaimer, Colin, Colin, <laughs> tiny disclaimer. And then I write my text. And 
And okay, so that's gonna be an easy way for you to copy paste in your convenience, whatever feature you like about Sphinx. And my take home message is that if you're working on a collaborative project like uh, the research repository I was talking about, or if you wrote some package that you're proud and you want people to, sh uh, to use it as well, then the best way to make people use the stuff that you wrote is by making it accessible and easy to use. So I hope I convinced you that Sphinx could be useful for you in documenting <laughs> your projects. Uh, so good luck with your projects and keep sharing the knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, hi. The question was, is there something that takes the entire doc strings from my entire project and automatically turns it into something? Then I really couldn't find one. If you can find, please, it's gonna make my life really easy. Okay, thank you for listening. Keep sharing the knowledge.